Welcome to the Irresistible You podcast. This is the place to get a dose of empowerment to create the life you crave and deserve. I'm your host, Amy Beltran, CEO and founder of Irresistible University. Through my podcast and signature online coaching program, I teach women just like you how to ditch the body image issues, gain confidence, and lose the emotional weight to look and feel irresistible at any size. If you like the podcast, you're going to love my group coaching program. If you want to learn more about it, including the investment, what's included, see real client testimonials, and to sign up and enroll, please head over to irresistibleicing.com slash course. The link is also in the show notes. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 149 of the Irresistible You podcast. This one is probably going to be long, um, and I want to let you know that today's episode was inspired by my weekend that I just had. I had made a decision that I needed to massively purge my closet, (laughs) Um, and in order to get to that part of the story and kind of why that was so necessary and where that's coming from and and then kind of talk about how you can do something similar um, with yourself, I need to get personal and I need to share where this came from and that sounds funny because I feel like everything about this podcast is personal but I'm going to really talk about some things here and I know that some of you that are longtime listeners I know that you have heard most of this probably in one form or another over the past year or so but hear me out just stick with me listen along with me um, and for those of you that are new, um, you know, obviously this is new information and I have and I have talked about everything that I'm going to talk about right now in greater detail and there are episodes that go into those details if you really want to learn more about my story and what's been going on in my world. Um, and I have to admit it's it's been it's been hard. It has been um, a really tough two years almost at this point. And I think a lot of people can relate to that in one form or another. And let me just get into it, okay? Because now I'm, I'm going off the rails. Let's, let's just get into it. So as I thought about 2022 and the goals that I want to achieve for myself, one of the goals that I have um, is to have a major glow up, right? Um, I think of a major glow up as like stepping back into yourself, coming home to yourself, you know, becoming the version of yourself that you see in your mind, but it doesn't match with the way you act and the way you see yourself in the mirror, if that makes sense. Honestly, that's what it means to become irresistible you. And that's why this has been so hard for me too over the past year is I haven't been feeling like me. I haven't been feeling like my irresistible you self. And that's why you'll see gaps in the podcast and and not being uploaded necessarily um, every single week because it's just been really hard to to do the things that I that I know work the things that I teach the things that I know I have to be doing sometimes that is difficult when you are literally going through survival mode which there's even an episode if you go a few episodes back I talk about being in survival mode and having to get out of it in order to have the year that you want to have. That's in episode 146. So just to kind of give you some background, where where's all this coming from? And I promise we're going to get to the closet stuff, which is the meat of this episode, <laughs> um, but it needs a little backstory. So I have been feeling stuck for about the past year or so. And like I said a few minutes ago, probably the last two years, to be honest with you. And the last time I really was feeling myself, like really feeling myself, like in the groove, in the zone, in the flow, feeling good, looking good, just like embodying the things that make me feel like Amy was probably in 2019, to be honest with you. And I know a lot of people can relate to that with the type of, you know, the last two years that we've had, because the last two years have been unlike, I mean, they've been unlike any other time in our lifetime. And in 2020, you know, with everything else that was going on, right, I got pregnant with my son in February. And we bought our second home in June. So we were moving and doing all this during lockdown. 
And then Javi, my son, was born October 26, which complete blessing. Like he has completed our family. He is so funny and cute. And he's just coming into his own now that he's, you know, almost a year and a half. And it's just so awesome to see. They go from this little nugget that just lays there <laughs> to this just amazing child. And you start to see their personality. So, you know, looking back in 2020, I was basically pregnant the entire year, if you will. I mean, from February until almost the end of October. <laughs> um, and also pregnant during the scariest times of this pandemic when there were so many unknowns. We didn't understand a lot of it. We didn't have, you know, the routine testing. We didn't have vaccines. And we were in lockdown, you guys. Like we were in actual lockdown where you couldn't go, places just weren't open right? It was bizarre. And it was such a crazy experience in and of itself compared to my pregnancy with, with Catalina, which is my daughter. And, you know, with her, my husband was at every appointment. We had, a, I've talked about this in other episodes. I'm not going to get into it too much, but it's like, you know, Frank couldn't be at any of my ultrasounds. He couldn't come to any of my appointments. And just that, that level of isolation that we have all been forced into in one way or another, like, I just want to put that out there because I know for all of you, you have experienced that in some way. And I want you to honor that and realize that, you know, if you're having a tough time, these are not normal times, okay? They're still not normal times. There are people that have had to say goodbye to loved ones over the phone. That is insanity like there are so many things that have happened um and you have these layers and layers of fear and unknown and you know confusion i feel like that's where we're at now is this ungodly confusion about things and just it's not normal it's not normal and we have to stop normalizing like what's wrong with me why do i feel the way i feel why am i so anxious why do i feel because you're not living in a normal time the last time things were quote unquote normal it was 2019 so even though we may have gone you know <laughs> gone back to living our lives and we're going places and we're doing things it's not the same let's just let's just remember that for a moment okay um so the night that I actually was released from the hospital and was home with, with Javi, I started having severe complications, okay? Um, it started with what's called a spinal headache, which is caused by leakage of spinal fluid that is from a puncture hole that happened during my spinal anesthesia during my C-section. I have a whole episode around all my postpartum stuff. I go into a lot of detail about it. It was excruciating. It was, I can't even put it into words. Um, and then the next day or the day after, it's all a blur, my C-section incision busted open and was bleeding all over the place. <laughs> and very long story short, I developed severe postpartum preeclampsia, which I had to be hospitalized for while I had a newborn only a few days old. And being hospitalized without your baby, because he can't come back because of COVID, and you could hear babies, and you could hear the little uh, lullabies going off, the newborns, and my family could not be there with me, that in and of itself, I keep saying in and of itself, I f like, oh my God, I should have like a, a what do they call it, like a counter, every time I've said that, I'm going to try to not say that again, um, being there alone during this very scary, scary time, that's trauma too. And I think that's the thing, guys, that we have to think about, not to sit around and feel sorry for ourselves and to pity ourselves and to feel like we're victims because we're not victims, but we have to also honor the little and the big things that we have been through that are actually a little bit traumatizing, right? So that happened, um, you know, and then, you know, oh yeah, we all got COVID just in time for Christmas 2021. So there's that. So that's how the year ended. <laughs> and during this time, um, I still had extreme, like I still had my, my C-section wound, which love my husband. He was unpacking and packing my wound every single night until just about around Valentine's Day 2022. 
So we are talking an entire year of pregnancy from last from February 2020 to February 2021 dealing with the aftermath of everything. And when you have a newborn that first year, you already know it's a shit show. You already know it is like sleep deprivation, it is challenging. Um, trying to find your groove again, trying to find your schedule, your routine. It's a lot. It's a lot with just that. And then you tack on all these other things in the middle of a pandemic. And it was really hard. And when you do have children, you don't have time necessarily to process emotions. And I know because of the work that I do and talking about losing emotional weight, if you do not process through your emotions, you will hang on to them. It's like baggage. It's like extra weight. And sometimes when you're just busy, 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 and you're in that survival mode, you don't have time to process the severity of what just happened because you just have to keep moving on. And I think that's a survival thing that's just built into us. But in the long run, it's not healthy to do that. Okay, so, you know, after Valentine's Day, the wound is, you know, basically healed. I don't have to, you know, pack that. It's not bleeding anymore. You know, Javi is obviously still not fully sleeping through the night. You know, he was still tiny. But there was this little glimmer of hope. There was like, okay, you know, I feel like things could start falling into place. And now I've been cleared. I can start exercising again. I can start moving more because this pregnancy between the pregnancy, the weight gain, and the complications, it really, it didn't just affect my weight, you guys. It affected my mobility in so many different ways. And I've never really experienced that before. Um, this pregnancy was just harder to recover from for obvious reasons that I just shared. And by the spring of last year, things really started to look hopeful again. You know, I felt like I was kind of falling back into myself. Like there was these glimmers of hope. It wasn't fully, but it was like these glimmer, this glimmer of hope. I could see the sparkles coming, right? And, you know, in the spring, we got vaccinated. Here we all thought that was going to be the end all be all. Well, <laughs> we all know how that story would end or let should I say hasn't ended yet. Um, and I was sick and tired of putting things on hold with this stupid ass pandemic and just wanting to live again. Like, I feel like a lot of us were just in survival mode. And that is not one of my core. My, one of my core values is to make sure you're living, not just surviving. And we booked a trip around April. It was like April or early May. We booked a trip to Disney World, which was something that had been on my bucket list to go during Halloween, which had been on my bucket list for years. And we we're like, okay, by October, you know, things are already looking up now. By October, woo, we're going to be like, things are going to be good, y'all. Okay, we all know how that ends too. So we did go on the trip. It was the, it was the sparkle, the highlight of my year. And it was something we all needed so bad. It was so good for us. Um, so we booked this trip. We're getting vaccinated. We're like, there's so much to look forward to again. We can make plans again. Because as you guys know, during all this time, you couldn't really make plans because you didn't know First of all, things weren't open. Then you didn't know if you should be doing things. And if you, anyway, I'm not going to get into all that because it's exhausting at this point. And I just, I want to move past it. Um, so then my daughter, my daughter, Kat, she was supposed to start um, preschool in 2020. <laughs> well, that didn't happen, especially with me being pregnant. It was like, oh, hell no, that's not happening this year. So she finally starts preschool um, in the spring. And it was everything she needed and more. She just, that was like a place where she just started to thrive. Like she needed that so bad. And our new family was really starting to just fall into place, you know. Um, obviously there's, you know, you always have challenges and you always have stress. That's part of life. But things started to feel like, all right, I got this. Like I could be a mom of two. Um, I can take care of them. I can take care of Chewy. We can have, you know, we can do fun things again. We can plan. We can go on vacations. We can go out to eat. We can do all these fun things. Like, and then June 25th, because you don't forget those dates, do you? Uh, June 25th, we got steamrolled with the news that our little girl, 
Catalina has type 1 diabetes. She was four at the time, and that summer <laughs> was probably the hardest and most difficult time I've ever experienced so far because there were so many unknowns, and it was so hard. And, um, you know, this is a lifelong condition. It doesn't go away. It doesn't balance out over time. Like, oh, how are her blood sugars? Man? Like, I don't know. Tonight they might be low. Tomorrow they might be high. Like, there is no balancing out of this of this disease. <laughs> um, and it doesn't go away. There is nothing that will cause it to go away. It just has to be managed. And I feel like we have crushed it. We are rocking it. We are, you know, through our pain... Sorry. Um, through the, the pain that comes with finding out your child has a, a lifelong medical condition that's not curable um, and how much work it takes. Diabetes is a 24-7 condition. I mean, last night I was having to wake her up at 1130 to eat Skittles um, because her blood sugar was dropping and it doesn't that doesn't change, but I feel like we just have, I have to pat ourselves on the shoulder. Like you have to do that. And I know that we are doing an amazing job and through all the pain and challenging times and hard, just, it's been so hard. Last year was so effing hard. And I have a whole episode around, um, finding out about this and, and what it meant and what we were going through. If you go to episode 136, you will hear the full story and, and all the things. So, you know, that happens. And when you're trying to manage the diabetes and learning what it means and having appointments and trying to get your daughter the best technology possible to make it easy to stop doing injections five to six times a day, like there was just a lot going on. And let me say this. I always say this to myself, if my kids are good, I'm good, y'all. Like I can, if our health and my kids are good and I'm getting enough sleep, I can do anything. If my kids aren't good, everything will come to a screeching halt because that is the only thing that matters in that moment. And, you know, obviously through that, you still have to pay the bills. You still have to work. You still have to bring the money in. And you just kind of find yourself going into survival mode. And I feel like I started the year in survival mode because when you got a newborn girl, you know you're in survival mode, okay? Because that's your job, right? You just got to keep this little baby alive, right? And that's just a whole thing. Then this happened and it was literally in survival mode because if I don't take care of this diabetes, if we don't manage it correctly, if we don't get this right, there are serious, serious consequences that will happen to her. And I will not let that happen. Okay. So everything else, you better believe it takes a backseat. And I know I shared this. I, I need to just stop saying that because I'm just telling you my story. And if I've said it before, I don't care. I had found myself last year slowly sinking into like a hole. Like the, the hole was sucking me down. Like I was like going down the well and I could see everyone above me having fun, getting back into life, laughing, um, going out with their friends, going out with their husbands alone, you know, doing certain things. And I would see people, what they were accomplishing. And I felt proud of my friends and seeing the people I know, acquaintances, friends on social media and such. And you're lucky if you got a like from me. And it's not because I didn't care, because I care deeply about people that I'm close to and people that I know. It's just because there was a lot of days, that's all I had in me, and I might not even have had it in me to tap the like button on a post. So for anyone that has not heard back from me, that maybe messaged me, hasn't heard back from me, hasn't heard from me as much as they think they should... This is why, because everything else, it's not that it doesn't matter. It takes a back seat because when your kids are not okay, nothing else, like it's like the world stops and you're the only ones like moving around. It just, everything stops. 
So um, that whole year, though, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, all year, I wanted to want, I wanted to want to come home to myself. I wanted to want it so bad. And how can I describe what I'm saying? Do you know when like you're feeling yourself, you're eating right, you're exercising every day, you're not binging, you're wearing the clothes that make you feel good and nothing can take you off that path. Like you're just, you're just on it. Like you're just doing the damn thing, right? People could have all kinds of food in front of you and you wouldn't care. Like you're just so focused on you and what you're doing. And I wanted to feel that so bad that it hurt. I wanted to want to blow my podcast up and move it to the top of the charts and make this thing like huge because that is one of my goals. I wanted to be on here every single week like I've done in the past and I stay consistent. I just didn't have it in me to stay consistent on here. I didn't have it in me to be consistent with myself because I was literally surviving. And I say all of this and I don't want anyone to think that I feel like a victim because I don't. I I am always going to be a survivor. I will always find my I will oh, you can throw me into anything and I will always come out fighting. That's just who I am. Now, I'm going to have my moment and I'm going to mope and I'm going to have a pity party and then I'm like, "All right, y'all, this pity party's over. Go home. It's done. We're done here. There's nothing else to talk about. Now let's have a plan and let's figure this shit out." But like I just, you know, through all of this, it wasn't all horrible. So I just want to make sure that's clear to you guys. Like, I'm not a victim. Like, oh, poor me. My life is so bad. No, my life is actually pretty good. There are so many things that I look around that I, you know, planned and set as goals years ago. And here they are. I'm living those things. And you can be both. You can feel grateful and proud of yourself and happy about certain things and also feel devastated and sad about other things too. You can have multiple emotions, guys. There's not, it's not like one or the other. And I think that's another misconception too is like in the weight loss journey is that when you reach a certain point and you reach a certain number, you shouldn't ever feel bad again or you shouldn't ever f- go backwards in any in any fashion but that's not true so you know there were things in 2021 um that were great there wasn't a lot it was it was 20 everyone said 2020 was trash for me 2021 was the was just trash like it was it was <laughs> I, i'm just glad it's over let's just put it that way And during that year, like I wanted to get glam. I wanted to wear high heels to go to the grocery store. Okay. I wanted to be myself again because that's me. I wanted to be the badass bitch that I actually am. And I just kept shrinking down into that black hole. It was... You know, there was a lot of times I felt invisible. I didn't feel seen. And when you don't feel seen, and I don't mean in my household at all, but like going out um, to the stores or whatever. And, um, you know, a lot of times people, they always compliment, oh, I like your earrings. I like your purse. I like your nails. Oh, my God, what's that perfume? Like people always, you know, and I just felt, um, I felt invisible a lot of times. And I know a lot of that was my my lack of confidence, my attitude, the way I was carrying myself. It's, it's all in that. And it's what I always tell you guys. If you have emotional weight that you're not dealing with, it's not going to go away. It's going to come out in other areas. Okay. And there was just that craving. Like I always say, create the life you crave. And I craved it so bad. I wanted to like be on my game with my eating and get, and I would see pictures. So 
Um, Javi was born October 26, 2020. Kat was born October 21st, 2016. So it's interesting because when I look at baby pictures, I can compare them because they were, they're literally four days apart, you know, four years and four days, but you know what I'm saying? So like when I look back on pictures, when she was six months, it's the same time frame. And, um, <laughs> when I would see pictures of myself, you know, in 2017, which was, you know, the year after or the couple months after she was born, I was in a much better place. Like, and obviously life hadn't decided like, Hey, I'm going to like throw these things at you. And I have found that it's been challenging to feel joy. It's been challenging to feel happy. It's been challenging to feel carefree. That is hard to admit. Because of everything that's happened, I feel at times I am so tightly wound up right now of wanting to control everything and not let anything else, not, not let the other shoe drop and have anything else happen. It's hard to like let go and just to have a good time. I mean, we did in Disney. Like, let me be real. Like, we, we definitely had a good time. But that ability to just let go for me has been really hard. Especially when you know you have to manage this blood sugar 24 hours a day. Like, I go to sleep and I, like, put, make sure I've got my watch charged so that my watch can go off in the middle of the night and let me know if she's high or low. And, like, it never You never stop worrying as a parent. Like, that was already a thing for me. And then you add this to it, and it's just been really hard to, like... Like, I feel like I'm constantly looking at the baby monitor. Okay, Javi's stomach is moving. Okay, her blood sugar is steady. Okay, this is, like... (laughs) Um, So there was a major disconnect for me. I wanted to want what I told you. But I was in the depths of it. I was in the throes of, like pure utter exhaustion and let me tell you it is not the exhaustion someone's like, oh oh go take a nap no honey like I appreciate that I mean no one's ever tells me that but that would be like a that would be nice right <laughs> um uh <sighs> It's the exhaustion that sleep can't cure. It's in your soul. It's in your bones. It's like, I just need a break. Like, not a break to go get my nails done or go to the store. I need a literal break, honestly. I was spent. I had nothing else left to give anyone. And that's what I said. If you didn't hear from me, if I didn't show up, if I, like, I'm sorry, but this is just where I've been. And it's funny to me, like, when you go through things, right, <laughs> when you go through things and you know people talk shit behind your back about how you're maybe not present or they haven't heard from you or you're, you know, whatever. It's so funny to me that no one reaches out, though. <laughs> Nobody reaches out and says, are you OK? Do you need something? I can't imagine what it's like right now. What can I do to help? And you know what else, too? For someone like me that has my personality, I'm a type 8 Enneagram. I don't like accepting help. I don't like feeling like, I don't like feeling out of control. That's my, like, if you look at a number 8 Enneagram, that's their biggest fear is they don't want to feel out of control or be controlled by others. Um, When someone is going, let's just give you guys a life tip here. (laughs) When someone is going through something really heavy and you feel like you haven't heard from them, Number one, there's a reason why you haven't heard from them. They're probably not okay. And number two, please don't say, if you need anything, let me know. If you need anything, give me a call. That is the worst, worst, worst piece of advice. Or like, not advice, like uh, words, I guess. People try to say to make themselves feel better, like they did something. Please don't say that. Instead... Hey, I'm going to come drop off some dinner for you tomorrow night. Is that going to, is that time work for you? Hey, um, 
I could come over tomorrow for a couple hours and do your laundry. Hey, I could uh, come over tomorrow for a few hours and help you clean the house. Or, hey, I door dash some food to you tonight. I hope you guys enjoy. And I did have some friends that did some things like that. And that is just so kind. And, you know, when you're going through it, y'all, like, you know, like, we all have to put ourselves first, but we don't. We we just don't. It, you can't. When your kids aren't okay, like the first couple of weeks or month even maybe, um, especially the first few weeks with Kat, we weren't really eating until 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> and me not eating, you y'all, you know something's wrong if I'm not eating. Like I would always joke people like they forgot to I'm like, what do you mean you forgot to eat? That's impossible. <laughs> um but anyway, so it's like I was exhausted. I was spent. I was running on fumes, if even that at times. Okay. I was just trying to survive, literally, literally, you know, trying to take Javi into our world and, and, and integrate this little newborn into our schedule and our lifestyle and, uh, learning how to live life again with type 1 diet with my daughter having type 1 diabetes because you have to relearn how to do a lot of things and in the beginning it just feels like this is you're never going to go back to normal and i will tell you that we have like it is a part of our life it is not a main part of our life it's there every day every moment but it's not obsessive it's not as scary. It has its moments. Let me be very honest. You know, we just went through some scary stuff two weeks ago. But it's not like it is in the beginning. It's just like with a newborn when you've never had children before. You know that if, you, if you're a parent, you know what I mean. Where you feel like you're going to break them. You feel like, oh my God, can I even do this? It's, it, and it gets easier. And then when you have another one, it's like, oh, the, the pacifier fell on the floor. Girl, just wipe it on your pants. You'll be all right. The first one, you're like sanitizing and all this, you know, you you get you get better, right? And that's what I say too, like with with cat, like type one doesn't go away, but we got better at managing it. We got stronger. We got more educated, and that girl is. Hang on. <laughs> there's one thing that I've heard from other parents is that their children are so mature because they don't have any other choice. You know, the things that she knows and says just blow my mind. And we keep things age appropriate. Like we don't scare her and tell her like, you know, but as time goes on, we, we will. Um, so anyway, with all of this going on, guys, I promise I'm getting to like the meat of the episode. I lost myself. I lost me. I lost Amy. I lost her. Not the mom, not the business owner, not the wife, not the friend, not what I am to everyone else. I lost me. What I am to me. I lost my sparkle. <laughs> I lost my glam and there were times that I just felt defeated by life and then there was the postpartum body stuff you know um, when I look back at Kat and how fast I lost I mean I don't want to say how fast but like I was so consistent with losing weight and taking care of myself and working out and you know this time around, all of that kind of took a back seat. I am proud of myself that I did still lose weight last year. I did not gain back anything. I basically just rode steady and maintained through all of this. And that is the stuff, you guys, no matter what you are going through, you have to find the things to be thankful for and be proud of because there is always something, even if it is just that you woke up again today and you're breathing, that is something to celebrate. Seriously, it really is. And 
I went through all that and still got off some of the weight, nowhere near where I need to be or where I want to be, but I did not gain weight through all of these hard times. And for that, I will always be proud of myself because the past version of me way before Irresistible You days, y'all, I would have been clear over 300 pounds right now. And I'm not trying to be dramatic. That is true. I would totally be that big right now because I didn't know how to deal with things. And it makes, it might sound if you're new to this, that I don't handle my feelings well, but I, I was handling some of them. I was talking things out. Me and my husband would have conversations every single night. Okay, what went well today? What do we do good? What do we need to do better? What are we proud of? And that's just how we got through it for a lot of the time, you know? And I was going to therapy every week. I still do. If you don't go to therapy, I highly recommend it. You need an objective third-party person to listen to you. Don't just share and dump everything on the people that you know because they may not always give you the best advice because they are biased. So, you know, then there's the body stuff. I would look down at my stomach, which this is the largest my lower stomach has ever been. Even when I was at my highest pre-pregnancy weight, my stomach wasn't like this because it's 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 changed. It's from the, the two C-sections, right? Um, and that weight gain. And I would look at my stomach or I would feel it and I would just feel so frustrated, so disgusted. You guys, I mean, I would fantasize about, oh my God, I wish I could just cut this thing off. I yearn to have surgery to just remove that extra skin because yes, I don't like the way it looks, but it's also extremely uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable. And I'm telling you, this was going to be really vulnerable. I was going to share some stuff today. And again, this was the first time that my mobility was taking a hit. My lower back pain from that stomach and from the pregnancy and, and the, I, I guess from the C-section too, like my lower back pain is so, like I when I lay on the floor to stretch and I, I put my legs up in the air like, I guess kind of like bicycles, I guess. I don't know what you call it. I can hear the bones clicking. Like, and it's so cringy. Like, it's just so cringy. Um, stretching, like my flexibility is off. My, um, just, I feel the flabbiest I've ever felt. Like, even though I've been bigger than this, like I just, because I haven't been doing the things that I know I need to do, the working out, the lifting weights, kickboxing, all those things. So the emotional, the physical, the mental load, the stress, it was just too much. It was so, so heavy. I craved and missed going out. I missed being on stage talking, um, being at events, being at conferences. I missed traveling alone for work. I missed, oh my God, date nights out alone with my husband, which has been way too long. Um, I just craved being myself again. I craved dressing up and all my, like I was cleaning out my closet and there's so many sequin things. Like what in the world is wrong with me? Um, I just craved dressing up, you know, being over the top. Um, and looking back on the year, you know, it's really embarrassing because I wore the same couple of outfits over and over again because they fit, because they were comfortable, because they would hide, they would hide certain things. And you guys, me, that's how it's like hard to talk about this sometimes because it's like me who preaches and has built a podcast and a business on telling you to find clothes that fit you now, no matter how much weight you've gained. And I did buy a couple things to like hold me over. I'm, it's not that I didn't do that. It's just, you know, I didn't go out and buy a whole new wardrobe because I have no intention of staying this size. And I was just in a place where nothing feels good. I don't feel like anything looks good. And I don't like being in that headspace. And I've been doing a lot of thought work, a lot of rule breaking, a lot of thought work around around um, how I'm speaking to myself and getting rid of that inner fat bitch talk because we can't, we don't have time for that. And I, you know, we moved here in 2020, June 2020. I was extremely pregnant. <laughs> Javi comes in October. So we got a lot of things done in the house, but we didn't get everything done. 
And I still had shoes and clothes that I had not unpacked, you know, laying it all out here for you guys. And I promised myself that this year, 2022, is the year that I become irresistible you again, that I come back to me. I come back to feeling like the badass bitch that created this podcast, this program, you know, all these beautiful clothes that I do love. I want to wear them. I want to feel good. I want to look good. I want to be strong, you know, physically and mentally. And I was feeling annoyed this weekend. Like, I just wanted to purge things. I wanted to throw shit away. Like, I hate clutter. I hate stuff. And when you have children, oh my God, like, Mm, it's 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 hard. I try to keep all of their things in their rooms, and we don't have a lot of toys all over the house. Down, I mean, there's toys downstairs, obviously, but they're not taking over my house. I love you, but you will not take over my entire house. No, not happening. Um. So anyway, I was like, I I was like, I need to clean their rooms. I need to go through all their clothes and start throwing stuff away. And I was like, no, 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 no. I adore them. I do everything for them. But you know what? I'm not putting me last right now. I have been ignoring my own closet and my own needs for way too long. And this is the time that I'm going to go through my closet. And I'm going to go through my things. Because if I don't feel good, if I don't look good, I don't show up good for them. And I noticed that lately and I'm feeling that lately and I need to be feeling myself in order to be a better mom, period. So I went through my closet and it was like a rage purge. I was like, let's get rid of this shit. Um, stuff in here I haven't worn in over 10 years. Like, And you know how they say that, what is that lady, Marie Kondo, is that her name? the real soft-spoken organizing lady, and she says, it's supposed to bring joy. You should hold up every item and ask yourself, does this bring me joy? And let me tell you something. 98% of what I held up in my closet does not bring me joy at all. It doesn't. Isn't that sad? It's like through all the bullshit the last couple years, getting pregnant, having to wear maternity clothes, still wearing maternity clothes in 2021 a lot of times and not buying a new wardrobe to fit the new body. My style and everything just kind of was like, I, no, I, I, no, these do not bring me joy. This is not what I want to look like. This is not how I want to dress. And I find it hard sometimes to throw clothes away. And let me, I don't throw them away. I always donate. I always donate. Please donate your clothes. If they're in good condition, please do not throw things in the trash because there's always someone else that can also, you know, give that gift down to someone else. So, um, these things in my closet are just not in line any longer with the style that I want to have. The new, the new 2.0, the 2022 version of me. They're just not, they're not in line with that at all. And I am going to do a second run of this purge because I think there was a lot of things that I probably also should have thrown in the bag that I didn't. Um, and it's a little bit of what I'm going to talk about. So all of this to build up to this, you guys. One of the things I had an epiphany about is that when you are overweight and you have been, you know, you've always been the token fat girl, if you will, okay? When you have been the fat girl your whole life and you have struggled with weight your whole life and you know what I'm talking about because you probably have a 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, you probably have every size in that closet, Right? It got me thinking about what we go through. And this is something that we go through silently that is never talked about. And that's why I love having this platform and this podcast because I want to give life to the things that are done and said to ourselves in private. We will hold on to clothes that we don't even love. We will hold on to clothes that no longer fit our style, that are no longer in style 
because you have a scarcity mindset around the clothes. The scarcity mindset tells us a bunch of bullshit lies that we will never find clothes that fit. It's like, well, this is ugly. This isn't in style anymore. This is not the style I want anymore. This has a hole in the arm. But you know what, girl? It fits. Oh, my God, girl. It fits. You should be so happy and grateful that your fat ass can find clothes that fit you. That's the conversation that's going on in your head. It's like that item that you are deciding you don't really love anymore. Well, yeah, but when you bought it. It was the only thing in the store that day that fit over your hips or the only thing that you could get over your head. So, you know, you really need to hang on to it because you're probably not going to find something that fits you that well ever again. And you should just be grateful because it's really hard to find clothes that fit your big body. If that's not the conversation that's going on, I don't know what it is. And I was like, oh, my God, this is it. There is a scarcity mindset about being fat and never thinking you're going to find cute clothes again. Because for so long, I think back to this is years of conditioning that you walk into a store and they don't have your size. They don't have clothes that fit you off the rack. You know, even wedding dress shopping was there's trauma in all of this, you guys, because it's it's again enforcing you don't fit in here. You quite literally don't fit here. And you're not wanted here. You're an outsider. You're a nobody because these clothes don't fit you. You know, I've had clerks that said to me, you know, your size is over there. (laughs) Um, I went to a wedding dress shop because I was trying to, we had already done the one, like me and my mom had gone to some, and we, I went to this one by myself real quick on my lunch break to see if they had anything, and I tried this one dress on, and when I put the dress on, and she pulled the, cinched in the, um, <laughs> the corset straps, or whatever the hell they are, the, the, in the back, she said, wow, wow, you really have a figure, a curvy figure, I'm like, yeah, bitch, I do, Like hourglass, 100%. I'm sorry, was that not evident to you and my fat that came in here earlier? Like, what the hell? So you have these experiences where people make, and even at, let me say, even at 16, I remember, um, and I think at the time I was 15, trying on bridesmaids dresses for my sister's wedding. And I'm a little kid, I'm 15 years old. And let's be real, at 15, I could probably, at least my body, I know would pass for 25. Um, And the woman just making such a big deal about my measurements. And when I look back to 15, I mean, what I would do now, y'all, what I would do now to have that body, like, okay, yeah, that's real fat. Okay, lady, like... But it's like you have these experiences where things are said to you by these no, these loser, no-name people because you don't know them. They don't know you. Who the hell are they to make these judgments about you and your size? Number one, okay? You have these experiences like that. And then you also have experiences where you go into the stores and no one helps you. Let's say it's like a Target or you know places like that where there's no one you know, in there helping you and you can't find anything that fits, you know, and I know growing up, especially here at the beach, you know, the surfer vibe, the skater vibe back in the late nineties was like all, you know, it was the thing. And when you would go to the skate shops and the surfer shops, there was all these cute clothes that had started coming out that were just for girls because before that it was only just guy stuff like t-shirts and, you know, their kind of stuff. And all the cute girl stuff, Roxy brand, I forget some of the others, they never fit me. I was curvy. I wasn't fat. I was not, when I look back to high school, I wasn't fat. I was extremely thick. I was extremely curvy. And these clothes are meant for, you know, not to be offensive, but they're meant for really skinny girls that don't have a lot of shape to them. 
And I remember buying a jumper that I thought was so cute. It was denim. It was like this dress and it had the, the Roxy symbol. And I bought it without trying it on. Cause I was like, oh, it's like a large or whatever. It's going to fit me. Y'all, I would try that dress on every year, every month. And it like, it never fit me. Never, ever, 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 ever fit me. That stuff is damaging to our psyche. It is damaging to the story that we create. It causes us to create this story that we're not good enough, that we're too fat, that nothing fits us. We don't fit in. You don't belong here. Oh, your size? Oh, sorry, honey. It's over there in the corner where it says WOMAN in all caps. That's your size. Like, what the F? Or, oh, your size? You have to go up to the second floor. Um, where all the home goods are at Macy's, and your size will be up there. Thanks. That is some damaging shit. And being overweight, there is so much discrimination that's that is that happens. Um, and we don't we don't think those people are assholes when we're going through it. We think we are the worthless piece of shit. Because we should be able to fit in these clothes. Something's wrong with me. All my friends can wear Roxy. What's wrong with me? Or going to the mall and going to that store 579 back in the day in high school. Like, it was called that because they only went up to a size 9. That's complete discrimination. And we're just now in 2022 getting a glimmer of plus. And I don't even like saying plus size. It's like seeing normal bodies. Like some of the stores that are actually carrying and having ads with women that aren't photoshopped and have cellulite and have rolls. It's like, thank you. Thank you for, for doing this. But why has it taken this long? And just because it's starting to get normalized now, some of us that are probably, you know, 30s and 40s, we still have that emotional weight that we haven't worked through. And if that's something for you, like you've got to work through that because that is causing you to think, I can't throw this away. Oh my God, I can never throw this away. I'll never find this size again. Do you know back in the day how many outfits I had that I bought? Not because I loved them, not because I felt beautiful in them, but because they fit. I bought them solely because they fit. And then we hang on to those items and think, well, I mean, it's so hard to find clothes that fit. And there's this scarcity mindset of, I will never find anything like this again. You know, um, and if there were sizes over 14 or plus sizes whatever you want I don't even like saying plus size I don't that that right in and of itself is saying you're different and I'm different and we need to call it plus size I have always been against that word but there's no other way to say it without people for you to know what I'm talking about we, we use that phrase right um, clothes should just come in sizes two to you know 20 something whatever this whatever they just should it shouldn't be called plus size I even remember um, we were at, I think, Ocean City. I was with my husband. We went, like, up for the day or something. This was, like, a lot, like over 10 years ago. And we were walking around on the boardwalk, and they have all those, like, sweatshirt. Like, we have it here in Virginia Beach, too. It's, it's like the same shops. They literally just have a different city on them. <laughs> and it was chilly. Like, all of a sudden, the weather got really cold. And, of course, I was wearing, like, a short sleeve dress. And... I wanted a hoodie so bad, like, you know, a cute little hoodie. And he was like, okay, go get one. Like, let's go get one. And I was like, no, 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 I'm okay. I'm okay. And I literally would not go get the hoodie because you had to ask for them because they like have the picture of them and then you have to ask for the size. And I was so traumatized by all these stories that I've just shared with you that some little shit, some little like shit named Chad, who's 16, is going to like say, oh, do you need a 2X or a 1X? Like, uh, it's the same thing with the kayak story I've shared with you guys, but we have to recognize this is the stuff, you guys, that is your emotional weight. If there is things that are holding you back, what is the story that you created around that thing? What is it? 
And for some of you, it might be, I don't deserve to have beautiful clothes that I feel beautiful and irresistible in because they don't make my size and I don't want to find out. I don't want to go to the store. Well, okay, we need to do some work around that and we can do that in a different episode. And that's a lot of what we do in the Irresistible You program is reprogramming your thoughts and the rules you created to stop that inner fat bitch talk. The inner fat bitch would say, yeah, you fat bitch, you can't wear that. Who do you think you are? You better hang on to that. Girl, you remember you went to Burlington Coat Factory and that was the only size that fit you? You better hang on to that, okay? Um, I remember these damn boots. Like, I have really thick, muscular calves. And, you know, zip-up boots are not going to fit my legs. Like, off-the-shelf, regular size, if it's not a wide, they're not going to fit. And so when they just started putting them in stores like over 10 years ago it was about it was about 2010 2011 and I scooped them babies up like they were going out of style because I thought oh my god I'll never find these again right and now we can find cat we can find thigh high boots that fit our legs okay we have the fashion we have the looks we have all the things they may not be in the traditional stores which let's be honest most of the traditional stores do not have that great of a selection anyway but online honey we can get any look we want we can get any look and so I want you to stop the scarcity mindset around your clothes we need to change that to an abundance mindset because there is an abundance of sexy irresistible clothes that are going to fit and flatter your body just the way it is today. You don't have to hang on to some ugly ass cardigan, some ugly ass sweater, some ugly ass leggings that got holes in the crotch because you don't think you're going to find anything else because you will. You'll find things that look way better. And when you start dressing better to fit your body as it is right this moment, it's a chain reaction. Because when you look better, you feel better, and when you start feeling better and looking better, you do better in all areas of your life. You know, but this stuff, you guys, this is the emotional weight. This is what I was all trying to get to is like, I have wanted to create a new style. I have wanted to dig in my closet and pull some of the outfits together and, you know, wear the heels and wear the the things that I love to wear But sometimes we're in a disconnect when we're going through a hard time. And I just want you to know that survival mode doesn't have to be forever. You know, for some of us, it could be months. Maybe some of you right now are are going, oh my God, I've been in survival mode most of my life. The first step in all this is you have to recognize that you're there. Because if you don't even know you're there, you can't help yourself. You can't help yourself. And so... You know, let's get these closets cleaned out. Like life is too short to be wearing a bunch of ugly shit that you don't like because you think it's the only thing that'll fit you. You know, and this doesn't happen overnight. The healing doesn't happen overnight. And how you got here sure as hell didn't happen overnight. It takes years of conditioning. You know, everything that I just told you, those those, those are just a, a snippet of my stories that have been told to me when I go to stores and then I internalize that and then when you go out with friends who are skinny who are a size 2 a size 4 and the first question they ask you when they try their clothes on when you're sitting there looking at earrings and shoes because those are neutral those are gonna fit and they say does this make me look fat Oh, oh my gosh, skinny people of the world, please, please stop this shit. Please stop asking your friends who clearly aren't skinny, do I look fat? Like, and I'm not going to give you some, like, oh my God, girl, yeah, you look so good. Like, no, they're fishing for compliments. It's pathetic and it's sad and you need to stop doing it. Full stop. Um... But, you know, when you have these experiences, you start to create stories in your head. And years of being the token fat friend, the fat girl in a store that you love, and that store doesn't love you back. 
That store tells you you're not welcome here. We don't have your size. You don't fit here. You literally do not fit in here. Have a nice day. And the times where some of the stores, you know, they did have what we call plus size, it looked like some grandma ass clothes. These loud, hideous, floral and crazy ass prints, huge draping fabrics like that just make you look even bigger. They do nothing to, you know, flaunt your assets. You go to the store to put on boots and they won't even zip up over your legs. It's humiliating. So then you say, okay, oh my, so when you do put something on, right? So when you do put something on that fits, you're just so happy that anything fit you that you have to have it. And I want you to think about this. This wasn't even part of my episode, but I just had this thought as I said that out loud. How else are you disrespecting yourself in other ways, especially in relationships? Oh, that man, that woman gave me attention. So I should just be happy and like accept this relationship, even though they treat me like shit. Think about that. It's not just vanity. It's not just your clothes. It's not just what you look like. This stuff goes deep, you guys. It goes deep. And if you don't have pretty clothes that make you feel good, that's not a vanity thing. Because we've said it a million times. When you don't look good, you don't feel good. And when you don't feel good, you don't do good. You are more likely to go fall into bed. You are more likely to go lay on the couch. You are more likely to not go after your goals when you don't feel good enough. So we have to kick this scarcity mindset to the curb because the reality is there is an abundance of fashion. There is an abundance of hot, sexy clothes, you know, that are going to look good on your body now and stop being so worried about the size no one else knows the size and you're not fooling anyone we all know that's the that's the other horrible I don't say horrible that's not a good word it's the other traumatic part about having binge eating disorder or you're being an emotional eater and having a weight being overweight everybody else can see it you know certain addictions to an extent they can be hidden Um, when you overeat to comfort yourself, you can't hide that. And that's humiliating. So you might as well embrace that body now. You know, you don't need to go out and buy a new wardrobe. I'm not going to go out and buy a whole new wardrobe because I don't plan on staying the size. But I know that I need to go invest in some other staple pieces to get me through the next couple months. Till I start to lose more weight and really get back to where I want my body to be. So this was a super long episode. If you're still listening to me, thank you. Thank you for rocking out with me. Thank you for being a supporter of Irresistible You. Thank you for, you know, joining me on this crazy journey. And, you know, hopefully there's things that you can relate to that you can see yourself in and you can, you get these little nuggets of, of um, inspiration, empowerment, so that you can go do that. So let's get these closets cleaned out. We need to get it ready for the spring, okay? If it doesn't, and here's another thing, if it doesn't fit, if it has holes, num- number one, let's go back. If it has holes or stains or is so pilled that it looks faded, please get rid of it. Please, please get rid of it. And I would much rather have 10 things in a closet that I know at any given point I can put on and feel like a badass, I can feel irresistible in, than have 100 things that are just sitting there that I'm probably never going to put on. But I'm hanging on to it because, oh my God, it fits. So, um, yeah, you guys, this was uh, a long episode. I hope it's helpful. Let's 
finish the conversation over in the free Facebook group. If you have any questions too, you can always private message me on Instagram. I am at Irresistible Icing. You can shoot me a DM over there. And thank you so much for listening. I will catch you in the next episode. Until then, stay irresistible. Bye, guys.